Probably the number one question that I get asked anytime I do something with a stock 8.1 is or is regarding piston ring gap. Uh, we have a junkyard big block that we're kind of pushing to the limits. It's an 8.1, it's been turbocharged. Uh, when I first swapped the 8.1 into the ugly truck about two or three years ago and started turbocharging it, people said the stock engine would only hold up to about five pounds of boost before it was going to completely disintegrate. Well, we have quite, you know, quite literally proven that wrong. We've run over 20 pounds of boost through this engine. Uh, no signs of detonation, no signs of cracking on the pistons. The rods look great. Yeah, sure, there's a little bit of scuffing on the sides of the skirts there, but this is a 140,000 mile engine that's seen a bunch of abuse. Um, the only unknown, which we're gonna figure out today, is piston ring gap. We're gonna measure it, uh, we're gonna adjust it if necessary, and then we're gonna do the final cleanup and get ready to put this 8.1 back together and put it back in the ugly truck, attach it again to this 80 millimeter turbocharger where hopefully this whole combination of truck and engine and turbo will travel down the quarter mile in nine seconds. That, that's a really big, uh, really big ambitious goal, but I have faith, I think we can do it, maybe, or break it trying, but anyway. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to put this engine back together. Uh, so let's talk ring gap. I already took the measurements on the number one cylinder. The top ring is at 21 thousandths. Second ring is at 32 thousandths. That's a pretty big discrepancy there. Um, and what I want to shoot for, 25 thou on the top, 28 on the second. Obviously, if it's bigger than that, we'll just leave it alone. This one, I want to open them up a little bit and we will measure all eight and then you know adjust the gaps accordingly. Depending on what your application is, your piston ring gap is gonna vary greatly. Um, you know, smaller bores that need a smaller gap, larger bores obviously need a larger gap, and a higher horsepower application like a turbocharged or nitrous motor needs a bigger gap than a street motor. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm shooting for. That doesn't mean it's right for your motor, um, but basically the process, slide a ring in the bore. This is the uh, second ring for the number one cylinder. It's already honed. Uh, this one measured in, like I said, 32 thousandths of an inch. So we're gonna leave this guy alone, pull it right out. Um, and I am gonna make sure these all stay organized in the correct cylinder. This one does need to be opened up just a little bit when it's in the bore. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. We'll get everything cleaned up and then put it back together because that's really my main goal is to get this engine back in the truck and get it back to the drag strip, hopefully this summer, maybe by, let's say August 1st. That sounds like a good goal. So let's get to it. So I always pay attention to this. There's a dot on the top ring, close to the end. And the dot goes up. Also a dot on the second ring, but it's further from the end. Oil rings don't really have any specific orientation in terms of up, down. All right, so we got this little guy right here, uh, just your basic hand crank ring filer. This is actually Nick's, he brought it in for me, because yes, Nick does have all the nice tools. Yeah, yeah. He denies it. But anyway, um, we gotta open up the ring gap a little bit. So, let's give it a go. Now, I've done this by hand plenty of times, but the nice thing about a tool like this is it will uh, keep the gap nice and square. So let's check it and see how much that took up. Five thou clearance, just what we're after. 
All right, bottom ring, hole number two has got plenty of gap at 32. Realistically, I think I wanted that one 28, but more. Guess it can't hurt. The top one, I think if this matches the rest of the cylinders, we're gonna have to open this one up just a little bit to get to 25. Yep, just need a little bit more gap. Dude. Alrighty, we got the first four cylinders done. The rings are gapped in the case of the top and checked in the case of the second ring, mainly because the second rings all have been at 32 thousandths where my requirement is like 28 and the tops have been 21 and I open them all up to 25. So cylinders one, one, two, three, four, however it goes, those are all done. We're gonna do the next set here. Uh, this is what the pistons looked like coming out of the engine. I did wipe the tops off while they were in the block, but this is kind of what the skirts looked like. You know, a little bit of wear on the side there, a little bit oily, nothing too major, but I just put them in the parts washer, or the first four in the parts washer, and this is what they look like coming out. So much, much cleaner. Um, it even got most of the stuff out of the grooves. I had to take a little pick and just get a little bit of the schmutz out. But anyway, that's what they look like all cleaned up. So I'm gonna take that batch, strip the rings off. Um, everything is organized in Ziploc bags so we know exactly which one came from which cylinder. And we'll put it back together. So that cleaner works pretty dang good by itself, but I have found that you just kind of scrape a little bit of the, you know, crusty oil, schmutz, whatever you want to call it, out of the ring grooves. It's going to make a much, much easier cleanup. Alrighty, so everything inside the engine, or all the parts rather that go inside the engine are cleaned up. We're pretty much ready to start putting this thing together. Now we're just waiting on a few more parts to show up. Um, this is kind of the, the clean and prepared part stack. 
rings are gapped, ready to go back onto the pistons. Pistons are fully cleaned, um, as well as the connecting rods. And this is just the other miscellaneous, you know, uh, timing cover, valve covers, uh, windage tray. We've got the valley tray, dog bones for the lifters, push rod, main cap, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this is all clean and ready to go back together. We just got our crankshaft back from the machine shop. I just had it polished. Um, so that kind of just restored the finish on the journals. They, I think scratches would be a bit of an overstatement. It just had a few light, light, extremely light scratches. So anyway, um, we got those polished out. It's ready to go back together. And one other thing I wanted to show you guys, if you see this groove right here, I actually had the 8-1 crank machined for a keyway. Normally, all they use is this little uh, 316s dowel pin. There's a hole right there that kind of gets driven in, you know, something like that. And that's all that holds the cam gear from turning on the crankshaft and the balancer. Normally there is nothing that holds the balancer on. It is just a press fit. Now that gave me a few problems coming apart because over time that press fit harmonic balancer has kind of vibrated back and forth. It galled the snout of the crankshaft a little bit. Luckily they were able to machine that true again. Um, and I have an aftermarket balancer that I'm going to put on specific for the 8.1 and the serpentine drive. And guess what? It has a keyway machine in it. So I had the machine shop, that's actually their name is called the machine shop here in Colorado Springs, cut a keyway groove into my 8.1 crank. So all we got to do now is slip this guy here into the slot. And then when we get our cam degreed in and stuff, we have a lot more material to hold the cam sprocket and now the keyway is going to stop the balancer from spinning on the snout of the crank. So um, basically everything is ready to go. New parts we're waiting on. I have a set of Clevite H series bearings that we're going to throw in this thing, stock clearance and stock size. Um, I'm getting new main bolts from GM. I don't know if you have to replace them or not, but I'm going to, and getting new connecting rod nuts. I read in the GM service manual that when you re rebuild one of these bottom ends, you can reuse the, bolt in the connecting rod, but they say put a new nut on. I mean, we could probably reuse everything and be just fine, but for a couple of more dollars in parts, it's peace of mind. And that's kind of what everything here is about. The ring gap technically would have been fine, but a little more gives me peace of mind. I like cleaning everything because, well, clean is better. And new hardware will just kind of ensure that we don't have any problems potentially. Well, I mean, realistically, nothing ensures you won't have any problems. But anyway, um, let's put the engine aside because I just got some new parts for the ugly truck and I can't wait to show them to you. So let's get them unboxed and I'll throw them on the truck real quick. Not fair. Nick says it's not fair because he really wanted these. All right, before I show you guys what's in the box, we're gonna put our new fender on that good buddy Nick picked up for us. Because if you remember, we used to have a side exit exhaust on this thing, which is fun, but I didn't really love it. It took away from the, uh, you know, sleeper vibe that we have going on. So luckily, Nick found me a junkyard black fender. It already has some of the same fading that's on the hood, so it'll blend right in. Never be able to tell. And I have two fenders now, so if I ever want to go back, well, we can easily do that. Of course, we'll have to fine tune this later, but I get a pretty good idea that because this is an OEM fender, if I line up the paint marks, it's probably going to line up pretty dang good with the hood. So with the front of the truck together, we got some new lights. I initially saw these on the uh, Silver Birch, I think is what they call it, the Silver Birch step side that we did a bunch of Atomic Fab coilover stuff on. And I had to get a set for myself. So we're gonna unbox them. Um, they're a pretty cool LED headlamp and running lamp. Um, I'll put the link down below. They do come from Amazon, but um, they're a direct replacement, no custom wiring. Um, so let's see what we get. This would be the upper or the headlight for the left hand. So the wiring actually looks like it ties both together because I think when the LEDs come on, there's a running light for both the top and the bottom. Um, it's like 
that. That's kind of what they look like. Of course, they're covered in plastic wrap, but um, LED headlights for high and low beam. This is an LED running lamp. I believe they have LED ambers on the side. Um, and these are DRLs down here. So uh, basically, this is what they are. Pretty awesome set of headlights. Let's get them in the truck and see what they look like. So first thing I got to do is actually install the headlight mounting bracket. That's the factory part. Um, I only took mine off when I did the engine swap. So you won't have to do this on your truck unless it's a part like mine. But got a few bolts. I always just put them in the holes. Zip them out and get the new headlights in. So everything's labeled. This one, daytime running lamp. Those go on the inside here. And then the blinker, also labeled, turn signal. The guy goes down here. All right, so that kind of goes through there. We can plug them in from the back side. So on the back side, we have high beam, which I believe is the inside. We have low beam, which I believe is the outside. And these, you plug in a diode into one of them if you need it, which we'll check that step in a second. They're a little bit brighter than my uh, 2020 GMC. It has those little C-shaped LEDs for DRLs. Um, these, I think they're a little bit brighter. So far, I really like these lights. All right, I am, I'm, I'm really happy with these headlights, guys. This is an awesome upgrade and investment. Um, as soon as we get this engine put back together, the truck is kind of going back to like daily driver status. So it's going to be good to have a nice set of headlights. They update the looks of the truck just enough. They don't make it look too goofy or too space age, but really having these modern LEDs in there is going to make this thing a blast to drive at night. Um, can't wait to show you guys what it'll look like. If you want to set it for yourself, these will fit um, 99 to 02 Silverados, and then I think like 01 to 07 Suburbans and Tahos that have kind of that classic style front end. I'll put a link down below the video so you can check them out. It's Ramjet 4x4 on Amazon. That's where I got these from. Um, but anyway, yeah, awesome lighting upgrade. Now I just got to get the rest of the truck done so we actually can use the lights. Um, made good progress today as well on the big block build. We've got the rings filed and ready to fit. Everything's pretty much cleaned up. And as soon as we get those last few parts, then we'll get this thing back on the road. Um, it's gonna be a weird couple of weeks for me coming up, guys. Um, my, my mom actually passed away recently, uh, like last week. So I'm gonna be traveling uh, to try to, you know, take care of all those arrangements and stuff like that. So bear with me, we've got a you know, we've got to take care of stuff. So I'll try to get back here and upload as soon as, anyway, as soon as all that's taken care of. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. Um, come back soon and have a good one.